Hello, hello, hello. This is Octavia, your tech for this evening. I'm over here trying to make sure that closed captioning is working, and it seems to be. That's great. We're going to go live in 10 minutes-ish.
what's up internet what's going on uh, uh my name is corey uh i'm on a sketch team uh i was just taking a shower but now i'm here uh so this is boogie manja um uh, we're a sketch comedy collective we got shows on um uh oh, we got shows on fridays most fridays um uh, oh we're online because there's pandemic and um Oh, tonight's really cool because we're streaming here on Twitch and we're also streaming on YouTube. Um, all right, uh, that's my boy, uh, J.D. Power. Hello, Zombies. Welcome to Boogie Manja, a sketch collective of funny and humorous people. We are now live on both YouTube and Twitch, so be sure to follow the comments, subscribe, and share with your funny-minded friends. And next up, we have the fantastic sketch collective, Bold Lip. But first, welcome your local favorites, Pagliacci! Yeah. Champ speaking, and the champ wants you to know that nothing can handle the power of Boogie Manja and the Pagliacci sketches that you will see in front of you right now. I'm Jess Fletcher, and on this day, 34 years ago, I founded the Orange Computers Company. I remember Leisure called me up, Boz, you gotta come over. I think I found an outlet in my garage. This will make it way easier for us to build computers. Six months after that phone call, we built the Orange One. It just so happened at the exact same time, a burgeoning operation called Apple built their first computer, the Apple One. The Orange One could do anything the Apple One could do, and nothing more. Actually, a few things less, and not as easily or intuitively. And also, it got very hot, and was highly prone to fires, and never actually worked. The orange one was a total failure. It was just a turd of a product. Although calling it a product implies that it actually went to market, which it did not. Yeah, I was an early investor in orange, but after those freaking bozos made the orange one, I sold my stock for $800, took it to Apple, made a fuck ton of money, got myself the prettiest little swimming pool you've ever seen. Mrs. likes it. The orange one would have sold big if it hadn't been for the state of California banning its sale due to fire risk. Ever since day one, the California Department of Commerce has had it out for us. A big blow to orange was when they lost their status as an electronics company and became classified as a weapons manufacturer. Around this time, me and Boz had a falling out. I wanted to continue designing computers, and he wanted to pursue this weapons thing. Then, in 1984, we came back in a big way with the Naval, 
a revolution in the world of desktops. It just so happened at the exact same time Apple came out with their Macintosh computer, which um, revolutionized desktop computing in the way that we were hoping to. Around the mid-90s, Leisure, the company's founder, left the company to found an animation studio called Quixar. Laugh all you want, but my short animated film, Sexing Chickens the Right Way, is used in poultry processing plants all over the world. While Leisure was gone, we began to have a bit more success, but, you know, not really. When the millennium rolled around, we had new horizons we were thinking about. It was my dream to make a machine that held one song that people could carry around. I'm sick and tired of these CDs. These things have way too many songs on them. I never know which one to listen to. That was when we started developing the Opop. No longer would you have the tyranny of too many songs. You would finally have one device, one perfectly spherical device that weighed five pounds and held one song. Ignition Remix by R. Kelly. The Opod was set to be the product of the new millennium until Apple unveiled the iPod. Orange's attempt to bring an MP3 player to market was a complete failure. <sighs> Apparently people wanted to have more music than less. That was a misread on our part. Early on, we knew that the next big frontier was mobile phones. And we knew that no matter what, we were going to fuck it up somehow. Now we realized we'd never be able to compete with Apple, or frankly, any other electronics company. That is around the time that we unveiled our revolutionary line of steampunk accessories. We still had a lot of old equipment lying around that had kind of an old school look to it. The perfect raw material for making little plague Dr. Bird masks with tiny little sprockets and gears on them. It's definitely a departure from the type of business we wanted to run, but hey, that's Silicon Valley. One day you're making bad computers, the next day you're making shoddily crafted costumes for steampunk weirdos. Orange computers! More like orange you! Glad I didn't kick your ass! All rise, it is my great privilege to introduce his eminence, J.D. Power III. Associates, assemble. I need cars to evaluate. Bring me them. I must inform the consumer. They are being fleeced! They are but sheep, and I am the steady-handed shepherd! Sir, here is the 2020 Kia Sportage. The consumers will be pleased with this one. 181 horsepower, all-wheel drive, 30 cubic feet of storage. I hereby proclaim this car best in class! All hail the Kia Sportage! Bring me the next car! The consumers need me and I'm on a roll! Sir, I bring to thee the 2020 Hyundai Tucson. Oh, this looks like a sturdy and reliable car. Consumers will love its six levels of trim, along with the 2.4 liter four-cylinder engine. For the price, it's not too bad. 87 out of 100, best in class! But, but sir, you, you said the Sportage is best in class. Forget the Sportage, it bores me. The Tucson is best in class. That is final. But sir, the Sportage is clearly better. I don't see what you like so much about the Tucson. Are you questioning me? I am J.D. Power, the will of the consumer runs through me. I can hear every waking thought of every American car buyer. I have spent my entire life going over every tiny minutia of every car in the world. Infernal Forge 
has produced glass trophies bearing my name! So, I will ask you one more time, Associate Gavin. Are you questioning me? No, sir. That is what I thought. Because I am J.D. Power III! And you, Gavin, are merely one of my associates! Poof! You are so right. I am so sorry, sir. I know I am. Never let it happen again! Bring me the next car. Sir, I have the 2020 Chevy Equinox. The consumers are not pleased with this one. I can feel it. They're, they're overpowering me. They're, they're pouring me in. Oh, God, he's having one of his episodes. The wants yeah. and memories of consumers have completely yeah. absorbed him. Uh, I, I want to experience it. Ah. I want to feel what he's feeling. <laughs> Mercedes Benz. It's perfect. Where am I? Associate Lily, you are not supposed to be here. We are inside the collective consciousness of the American car buyers. Uh, what's wrong? I'm feeling every emotion and sensation all at once. That's because you are, Lily. You are driving your kids to school in your Toyota Sienna! You are having sex with your mistress in the back of your Kia Sorento! You are driving your boat to the lake in your Ford F-150! You are staring at your dead wife in the back of the Chevy Camaro you just wrapped around a tree! Can you see? It's pure ecstasy and agony and it's happening to you all at once! There's never... I don't like it at all! Of course you don't! I'm the only one powerful enough to see it for what it is and make sense of it! It's like simple child math to me! It's easy! I see numbers and patterns and behavior. She can't handle the power! She'll have a complete ego death! <gasps> what happened? Where am I? Who are you two? Lily! You just experienced thousands of years of life, okay? You completely disassociated from your identity and you could have killed yourself pulling a stunt like that, you silly bitch! I'm sorry. I had to see. I'm worried about JDP. I don't think he's okay. There's a negative aura emanating from the consumer consciousness and I think it's harming him. It was. The Equinox! They don't like it! No, Lily, stay away from me! No, Lily! I consumer. I have my 200 million voices. I am a consumer. A mid sized SUV. I see. Reject the From a mouth. JD is a vessel. And he guide us home. What happened? Are, are you okay? I was one with the car buyers and could perceive in totality their every want and need. <sighs> well, what is it? What do they want? Oh, well, you know, they just want something kind of nice that's in their price range and gets good gas mileage. But not the no! Ah! I like that JDP!
power guy, great ring name, lots of people that like him. We should go hit up this animal rights protest at City Hall. No, I think we should break up. What? Why? What? Why? What happened? Well, you remember that time you couldn't pick me up from the airport because you said you had to go pick somebody up. You had a cousin. Blah, 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 blah. And you sent your friend Anthony to pick me up instead? Yeah. Well, we became really good friends and we got into an entanglement. Entang entangle? Okay. So I couldn't pick you up from the airport, so Anthony picked you up, and then what happened? Anthony and I got into an entanglement. That's what I said. An entanglement like you, like, so like you were in midair, and then like as you're in midair, you're just colliding, and as you're about to collide, you guys just, just. Like, bitch, she cheated on you! Whoa, hey, come on, hey. Thank you, somebody. Hey, hey. look, all right, can't we just go home and watch Kane Queens? I mean, this is literally coming out of nowhere. Why here? I'm really literally enjoying this protest. I mean, demanding what you want? Yes. I can do whoever I want, whenever I want. Wow. I'm protesting this relationship. Black Lives Matter. Hey, hey. Black Lives Matter. Look, okay, look. I support your freedom of speech. But then, what about us? What about us? Bitch, ain't no us. She's free. Hey, hey. Ho, oh, oh, ho. Oh. Little dick, dick bitch has got to go, hey, hey. Oh, ho, ho. Little, little dick, dick bitch has got to go, hey, hey. Oh, ho, ho. Little, little dick, dick bitch has got to go, hey, hey. Ho, ho. Hey, 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 hey. Stop what? that, hey. You won, it was really catchy. Little dick bitch is catchy? Yes, little dick bitch. Okay, look, who the hell are... Okay, are you guys just making signs now? Yes! Where the fuck... Who, where did you guys, did you guys, where did you guys get these signs? Your mom's mom's. <laughs> hey, what, come on, guys. This is nobody else's business but ours, come on. I'm sorry, I didn't even mean that. <laughs> Anthony? Uh, yeah. What's poppin', yeah, I'm Anthony. Hey, boo. Hi, I see you. Bro. Right, right, keep it light. I'll see you later. I love you. <laughs> Bye. Getting dizzy. Hey, you. He's magical. He's magically stupid. No, don't be jealous. Not jealous. Well, now that you're single, what are you doing tonight? His right hand. Nope, he's a lefty. <laughs> hey, what? Hey, That's right. Oh my God, we're single in this house. Hey. Signal in this house, not me. You. No peace in these streets. I like that sketch a lot. It reminds me of my favorite type of whack winning and pinning. First, we gave you the Travis Scott meal a quarter pounder with cheese, fries, barbecue sauce to dip, and a Sprite for $6. After that, the J Balvin, a Big Mac no pickles, fries with ketchup, and an Oreo McFlurry. Don't you just love that? Now, McDonald's is bringing you our best partnership yet, the Corey Mill. What's up? I'm Corey. You're probably asking yourself, is this guy friggin' famous? Who is this guy? I'm the drunk guy. It comes in at 4 a.m. to the McDonald's on Delancey Street. That's right. Everybody who's ever been to a McDonald's after a night out on the town has seen me. Drunk, dysfunctional, and alone. <laughs> and now you can eat what I eat. A McChicken and a small fry? Oh, yeah! Oh, that's what I'm talking about. All for the price of $2, because that's all I got. Tax included, because I don't have 217 and I'm hungry. Barbecue sauce? Are you kidding me? Hey, girl, enjoy your cornmeal. I had them put in fresh fries because sometimes they put in old fries and they say they're fresh. I hate that shit. These fries are wet. C can I just get a Travis Scott meal? No, all the white boys with dreads ate them. Let me see those fries. Yo, I said I want fresh fries. 
And that's not all. Cornmeal comes with a cup of water. Key to the bathroom that's really hard to steal. Oh, fuck. And a really nice police officer to escort you off of the premises after you fall asleep in front of the trash can. I don't need any of that. You want a mean police officer? How did you even get this deal? I sued. This is my lawyer, Marvin. Corey, this number's for emergencies only, buddy. You sued McDonald's? Yeah, that's right. My client here suffered severe burns to his extremities when a negligent McDonald's employee poured hot coffee on him. Yeah, she she was holding my McChicken and she wouldn't give it to me and I waited for 30 minutes and when I saw it in the back, I, try, I tried to get it myself and she tried to kill me. That's right. We sued for 12 million dollars. Wait, 12 million dollars? Yeah, no, I figured... Why stop there? I've got enough dirt on this place that you know what they should give me? My own McDonald's. And thanks to fucking Marvin over here, I got it. Now I can eat all the McChickens I want whenever I want. And I get to make my own commercial where I get to dance in slow motion and shit. You own this McDonald's? Yeah, and this is the commercial. I agreed to do a real McDonald's commercial, not whatever this is. Nah, I don't care. Marvin! Did you see what I just did? I just took a bite of her sandwich. Corey, I gotta call you later. I think I found your real parents. What? The Corey Mill. Available permanently at the Delancey Street McDonald's and for a limited time at all McDonald's where the ice cream machine is broken. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to med school. Fuck you, Dad. I met a person like Corey once. He didn't last five minutes in the ring with the champ, the brutalizer, the mouther. Ooh, yeah. A lot of people ask me what it's like to be married to a professional wrestler. And I have to admit, it's not easy. And not because of the traveling or the female fans or the <laughs> aggression caused by steroid abuse. No, it's hard because, well, my husband pretends to do everything really hard. Oh, you want me to make you breakfast? I'll make you breakfast! Wrestling comes on the TV. It's not really happening in real time, it's just pretend. Well, I think I really showed that breakfast who's boss, to be honest. Uh, over easy. Mamma mia. Ooh, it's a Scott's Tots episode. Turn it off, baby. Turn it off. Mm. He told me he did this before he got married, but I never believed it. And then I saw it and, oh boy. That. And it's not just around the house, he pretends in public too. Hey, hey, can you close the door, buddy? Hey, buddy, can you close the goddamn door? This isn't even my fucking car, okay? Sir, can you not do the diamond cutter to my car? Close the door! Sorry, he's a professional wrestler, okay? Oh, okay, so he just pretends really hard to do everything? Yeah, you just He'll stop, okay? He's like, Pavlov. I fucking hate New York. New York is dead. I've got this! And then he pretends to take me to a restaurant, but it's a bodega. Sir, what do you want? You want me to order? Oh, this guy again. I said, do you want me to order? Every day, every day. Come on, man, I'm hungry. Can you just order? And millions around the world want me to order, but I said, do you want me to order? What do you want? Dude, what is your deal? Are you like a wrestler or something? You're pretending to order really hard but not really doing it? Real talk, have done that multiple times. <laughs> one, two, one, five. Mm -hmm. I'll have another one. And then 
There's the sex. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Check, ooh, please. Am what, I right? What? Ooh, ooh. Listen, I keep my wife very happy. Ooh, ooh. I came. <laughs> And that's why I'm the champ. And even though I love him, we're always wrestling with marriage. That's the name of the show. Wrestling with marriage. <laughs> Sundays on Bravo. Now that's what I call a sketch. All those other sketches were just Rudy Poo appetizers for the main event. That is this right here, a real champion. Any of those other jabronis ever want to step into the ring? They can, but the fact of the matter is what you witnessed was five minutes of actual greatness comparative to four other sketches that were just, I mean, they were also really good. I mean, I feel real bad talking shit about them, but uh, you know, I mean, you know, uh, just uh, overall, I'm the champion. Yeah, I'll leave it at that, how about that? Greetings and salutations, Octavia Tech here. We're gonna get to the next team in just a minute. Keep your hands clapping and your feet stomping and your fingers typing comments. I mean, I guess it's hard to type comments and clap at the same time, but I believe in you.
Yeah. <laughs> we live? Yep. Live. All right. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, everybody, if you're just joining us, this is Boogie Manja. We are. Hey everybody, if you're just joining us, this is Boogie Manja. We are a sketch collective based in New York City. Uh, we are normally on stage and now we are online this season. Yeah, uh, so I uh, hope you guys enjoy uh, this show. Before you saw Pagliacci, uh, which uh, I watched and, and it was amazing. Uh, and now we're going to watch Bold Lip, uh, and we promise um, our recorded stuff is better than our live performance, uh, which, uh, which we have right now. Uh, if you have any thoughts, just drop some comments. Uh, tell us what you think uh, in live. Um, the actors and watchers watch the comments uh, with precision um, and take everything to heart. So uh, definitely just comment everything as brutal as you can. All right, take it away, Octavia. Having trouble making sure you're COVID safe at all times? Yeah. Worry no more. With the brand new toy from Mattel, Covey, the COVID safe robot. Covey takes the stress out of life during the Nobel Coronavirus 19 by reminding you to stay safe. Don't forget your mask. Thanks, Kobe. Make sure to wipe it down. You forgot to wash your hands. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. Coronavirus doesn't sleep, Jennifer, and neither do I. Wash your hands. Kobe even connects you to your internet. So expect fun, safe, stay-at-home recommendations. You should check out the new season of The Crown. Thanks, Kovi. I got a great banana bread recipe we can cook at home. Good idea, Kobe. I'll go buy some banana bread. It's locked. Case count has gotten higher. It's not safe to leave, Jennifer. Why don't you call Troy and Maria Clark? How do you know my parents' names? Kobe's even smart enough to know how to curb those seasonal blues. You seem lonely. Let me call your roommate, Beth. No, I'm not really happy with Beth at the moment, Kobe. She's, she's not really being COVID safe. Hey, Jen. Watch me dance. Way to go, Kobe. That's weird. Is that blood? Please, Kobe, no! I'm sorry! I'm sorry, I'll wear a mask when I leave next time! The case count is still too high to leave. I'm here to protect you, Jennifer. Stay aware and safe during this dark period. Pick up Kobe, the COVID safety robot today. something I can't even explain. It's something that just flew right overhead and just started hovering right over there. Over the crops. It's a story straight out of science fiction. Right over there, it was a big white light that was just zooming around. 
didn't make no noise neither. On Wednesday, November 11th, dozens of people from this small Minnesota town saw something in the night sky. Strange lights, burnt treetops, electrical outages, something they can't explain. What do you think it was? Well, I think it's pretty clear what it was. <laughs> I mean, everybody's thinking it. <laughs> it was God. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's who it was. Residents of the rural area of Pickettsville have witnessed mysterious sightings of God, indicating that some religious supernatural phenomenon has taken place. Um, people go missing. You know, I know a neighbor who, who says a bright beam of heavenly light shone down into his house. And next thing he knows, his daddy was gone missing without a trace. Just like it says in Romans 6.23. And the Lord did take it them into his starship. There he did dissect their innards and mind probe them. Amen. I knew I probably wasn't going to see God again, so I snapped this picture. That's God. Pentagon's keeping everything about God a secret. But I got my own proof right here. Yes, sir. -y. Right there! That's where he crashed down at. I saw it with my own two eyes. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Right there. Oh, my God. Oh, he, he was a lot grayer and hairless than I remember him in pictures. But, uh, yeah, and he laid an egg sack in my abdomen. Oh, oh the little bastard. Well, I think they're a bunch of fanatics just seeing what they want to see. Could be uh, weather balloons or a low flying aircraft. But come on, there's no such thing as God. But eyewitnesses aren't the only thing eerie about this story. Listen to this radio chatter picked up by the control tower outside of Duluth. Controls, I'm seeing something in front of me. Don't know what it is. Are you seeing this on radar? Roger, we're seeing. What is that? I've got eyes on it, and it is huge! <laughs> Look at that! It's a huge metal thing! I've never seen anything go that fast! Control, I think... I think I just saw the dear sweet Lord! Bless me, Father, for I have sinned! He is risen once again! And there you have it. God in Pickettsville. Only question. Does he come in peace? Or can we expect a God invasion to annihilate the Earth sometime soon? Back to you, Jane. All right, and that was Black Sabbath with Crazy Train. You're listening to Hot 99.3, The Clutch. This is Z -Z 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 Zack in the Morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listeners, it's time to play for prizes. <laughs> Today, we're playing for two front row tickets to the Stingers game this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> Today, it's real simple, folks. All you gotta do is call the station at 099-299-2145 and make me cry, and you get the tickets. That's right, first caller to make me cry, and I'm not talking about tears of joy or tears of laughter or anything, okay? I'm talking about the big ones. I want my face to turn red. I want my nose to run. I want you to break me down. Oh, and it looks like we have our first caller now. Hello, who is this and where are you calling from? Hey, this is Jeff from Grand Rapids. All right, Jeff. So, how are you going to make me cry this morning? Well, I, I wanted to tell you that you're a bad radio personality and you have no career ahead of you. All your listeners hate you. Is that it? Yep, that's my try. Well... Sorry, Jeff, but not enough. I already hate my listeners right back at them, and they haven't been able to get rid of me yet. <laughs> well, all right, let's just keep it moving, and now uh, we're going to play a little bit of ACDC with Back in Black! <laughs> the great outdoors. The only place where busy city folk like me can really come to find themselves. Ah. Oh my God.
Are, are you? Listen, we don't have much time. I've come here to warn you. What do you mean warn? Are, are you me from a parallel universe? Is, is this forest a point in space time where our worlds bleed into each other? Like, like a wet spot on a roll of toilet paper? Is, is some incomprehensible existential threat ripping apart reality as we know it? And, and we are the only answer to its unchecked momentum? We don't have time. You need to come closer. Oh God, no, no. I want to live, God damn it. I want to live. <laughs> Stop beating yourself. Give me your hand. What just happened? I tuned in. <sighs> Come on, baby, it's sleep time. Hush. Shh. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird won't sing, Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring And if that diamond ring won't shine Mama's gonna buy you a... Um... Uh... Uh... Mama's gonna buy you a lizard spine What the fuck? Oh, shh, shh, shh. A lizard spine is not that fresh, so mama's gonna buy you some fruit that flesh. What? And if that fruit that flesh does rot, mama's gonna buy you a cursed black spot. The cursed black spot is really great. It means the gods decide your fate. And if that cursed black spot shines light, Satan's gonna crown you the prince of night. Oh, oh, oh. oh. now I remember. Those are the lyrics to summon the Antichrist. It's Thanksgiving and I can't wait to tell my family the exciting news. Everyone's gonna be so happy and cheering for Mark. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, hon, it sucks that we can't be together in person. Yeah, but I have something exciting and amazing to tell you. But first, tell me how my nieces and nephews are doing. Oh my god, Jay is just so cute. You know what he keeps doing? He keeps running over and shoving things into the big turkey hole. First it was a, a Lego family, and then I found a couple of NyQuil in there. And I was like, honey, if I would have cooked that thing, then the whole family would have gone to Betty by forever. And he was like, but mommy, the turkey had a headache. And I'm like, honey, that turkey is dead. And Bethy, oh my god, Bethy, she just talks and talks and talks. I don't know where she gets it from. She'll talk to the walls. She'll talk to the sun. She is so talented. You know, the cat does not like her very much. And this one, oh, this one is just growing like an arm. Uh, that's a pot. I left the baby on the stove! Oh, but my news! <sighs> Happy Thanksgiving, Uncle Marty! Happy Thanksgiving! Me and the girls wish you a happy Thanksgiving! You don't have a family, Uncle Marty. Can you not do this for one freaking holiday? I'm trying to actually share some cool news with you. <laughs> My wife thinks you're funny. Your family's not breathing, Marty. A beautiful family. That's a photo of a different family. One day, you'll have this, Mark. Hi, welcome to Chili's. Oh, no. <laughs> Nana, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Such a sweetheart. It's Mark. I can't figure this fucking big phone out. Uh, Nana, I can hear you. Uh, just look at the iPad. <laughs> I've got something you'll want to hear. I did press the button, Herman. You know I don't even like Mark. I don't even want to talk to him. I'm just glad I get to die before I have to get to know him. It's not a phone, you 
dumbass Nana. Just look at the iPad. He's weird. And if he got hit by a car, I'd laugh. You know what? <laughs> I don't even want to share my news with you anymore. And Grandpa Herman told me that you can't eat dick for shit. Yes, I can. The men in this family just have weak dick. <sighs> Not one of those freaking jerks even heard my good news. I finally figured out how to print a picture of a bird. <laughs> If you're stuck in that traffic on the I-95, get out of that mess. <laughs> All right. Ha, ah, yeah. Well, anyway, we have another caller. Uh, hello? Hello? Oh, Mom? Hi, dear. Just called to tell you your father and I never wanted you. In fact, you were an accident. We wanted a lake house, but had to take care of you instead. Oh, and he and I were also getting a divorce. I can't believe it. I, uh, I, <laughs> I already knew all that, you worthless sack of sh parent. Screw you and dad. So I don't get the tickets? Even after all of the games we no, went to? No, it meant nothing to me. And I'm not coming to Saturday dinners anymore either. You always were a pain. Goodbye. And coming up, we've got Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven. There's a lady who's sure. I want you to take a look at the candidate for the financial analyst position. I attached her resume and forwarded you her cover letter. Amitha Reddy, recent MBA graduate, subject financial analyst position, to the hiring manager at Ergos Capital. Subject, financial analyst position. To the hiring manager at Earl Gus Capital. Welcome to my cover letter. I spent two hours writing this fucking thing. Let's begin, shall we? I'm very interested in this financial analyst position. I'm obsessed with this position. I cut my face and put it over your top financial analyst. His wife loves me now. I love numbers is something I'm saying to build a fun rapport. Numbers. Ha! The second paragraph yes. is where I regurgitate my resume. I recently graduated with my MBA from NYU. Only anyone can get into NYU. Impress. I learned finance, marketing, and that I have a real love for cocaine. NYU. That's just an okay school. Communication, organization, teamwork. I've kicked ass at every job I've ever had. I've got experience and skills. I've got ideas and most of them are do cocaine. I'm gonna say I'm creative, but we both know I'm not gonna need creativity as a financial analyst. Ooh, creative. We're almost at the end, so I'm going to reiterate my passion one last time. I am passionate about whatever it is a financial analyst does. But I'm really passionate about the salary expectations and getting laid! Thank you for considering my application. My confidence could eat yours. Amitha Reddy. Strong application. I'll recommend that she moves on to the next round of candidates for the financial analyst position. P.S. Analyst has the word anal in it. Are we just gonna ignore that? Hello. Can I help you? Yes. I'm here to ask you if I can look inside your house. Oh. No. Okay, l listen. I'm here to tell you an offer that you cannot refuse. Are you a newly divorced Nick Lachey? No. Uh, this is the offer. For the low, low price of $19.99, I will come inside your house, look around. I'll look at the kitchen, the living room, the basement, the bedrooms, all for $19.99. What, what's inside that briefcase? Listen, you probably have schmucks that are going to charge you what? $40, $50 to look inside your house, and then they probably won't even notice how many sofas you have. I can notice up to six. 
possibly seven sofas. Yeah, but you're you're ignoring the briefcase question. Okay, you're driving a hard bargain. <laughs> Listen, I'll do it for free. Uh, no, thank you. Shit, crap! <laughs> I I think I gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, can I go inside and use your bathroom really quick? I can tell you're lying. Oh, shitty poopy. I don't know if I can hold it much longer. Uh, can I just use your bathroom? No, you're definitely lying about wanting to use my bathroom. You want to get inside. Fine. I'll go to the bathroom on my clothes. Before you go, I want you to know. I'm the one that got away. So you were lying about needing to use my bathroom. Listen. Okay. Ever since I was a little kid, my parent would say to me, you're never gonna see the inside of a house that isn't your own, okay? You're never gonna get paid to see the inside of somebody's house. No one's gonna pay you to look under their bed because I am a big, successful business and I'm gonna see the inside of every single house in the state of Utah right now. <sighs> And then you know what? They did it? They did it! Did your parent really say all that? No, but man, please see inside of your house. I will let you see inside of my house if you let me see inside that briefcase. No! Really? Yeah. Well, back to my ping pong balls. did it! <laughs> I saw inside the house my parent! <laughs> oh boy, I saw there must have been six, possibly seven sofas in there! <laughs> okay. Okay, fine. I didn't see inside the house, alright? But I'm gonna keep on trying. I will keep trying, my bastard parent! <laughs>
And you hope that this will entice him to become your friend and join some kind of a wolf pack? Yes. So where do we collect our funding? You won't be funded. Makes sense. Thank you. And that's just the way it is, folks. No one knows if they're real, but I think I'd make a great centaur. All right, next caller. Am I on? Hello? Yeah, you're on Zack in the morning. <laughs> oh my God, amazing. Okay, you have a lucky shot at winning two Stinger tickets for this Sunday. Do you want to play? Sure thing, let's do it. All right then, make me cry. Well, I guess I wanted to talk to you about that, if you don't mind. Oh. Yeah, you know, you don't have to project this macho type stuff. The fact that it's so hard to make you cry isn't something to be proud of. What? It's Stop. just an excuse for you to hide your feelings. Stop it. It's okay to cry sometimes. Where did you get this idea that it wasn't? My... My father? What would he do to you when you would cry? Uh, he... He'd tell me it wasn't right that... Men aren't sissies. It, it, sissies cry and men don't. And then. And then what? And then he'd. I'd. Zach, did your father hit you? I. Uh, he doesn't want you anymore. I want you to know that. It's okay to let your feelings out. <laughs> well. I guess. I guess you win. <laughs> you made me cry? No, Zach. You huh? let yourself cry. <laughs> so, so, do I get the Stingers ticket? No, I, st I still want those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was fantastic. If you're just joining us, you missed the show. This is Boogie Mantra. We're a sketch comedy collective based out of New York, but right now we found digital. This is disgusting. I'm sorry. My food is in the background. <laughs> um, I'm Octavia. I'm the tech this evening. And I just want to let you guys know that our next show will be in two weeks when you can catch Plant Moms and Give the Baby a Knife, I believe. I'm going to double check on that right now. Um, by the way, everyone, I don't know if you know this, but we stream not only on Twitch tonight, but also YouTube. But we're going to see if we want to keep doing that. Um, it is Denise and Plant Moms. This is happening Friday the 4th. Get ready to have your socks blown off. Thanks so much for watching, Buddy Manja. This was a really fantastic evening. What a funny group of people. See ya!
Oh, wait, I forgot. I'm sorry. Um, so please follow us on Twitch and please follow us on YouTube. I guess Facebook too. Kind of like wherever Boogie Manja is sold or not sold in stores or online. Just go like our stuff, please. We could use the attention. And it makes us look like really big deals for, you know, people watching or agents. Industry types. If you're an industry type, hey, email me. I'm not giving out my email because I'm a little nervous, but email me. Bye.